welcome to a Sunday drive with your bullfrog. This is a bit different from the Odyssey rides, as in this case, we have no particular place to go, like that 60s song by Chuck Berry. But we'll see some cool places. We'll even see some railroad history today, such as what's up around this bend. And one time there was a mob railroad truss going across up ahead there. Here's how it used to look. And here it is now. Nothing there. And up here, the Ma and Pa's Lock Raven Branch one time crossed. Must have been nice to take a drive back then. And this is Glen Arm Road. We're heading for its namesake. Now we're in the road's namesake. Glenarm, Maryland. And by a former Mon Pa station. You've seen this before in my previous videos, but as long as I'm here. Now here we are, trackside or what was trackside back when the railroad used to run. Here's how it looked back when it did. It also looked like this once upon a time. And here it is today. Same view, almost. The street is known as Hooper Lane because at one time it led to the Hooper Cannery or factory, whatever it was. One time located behind this. They closed up back in the 1950s. And yeah, we got Ma, but no Pa. Got half a railroad. Here's a shot from the 70s, featuring her. And today. And I'm continuing a ride into history. I'm about to pass around Watchbox Hill. Now on Long Green Pike, heading northbound. And up on the bend is a winery, as I call it. And today being Sunday is wino day, wine tasting day. Bordy Vineyards. I tried to grab that sign. Now I'm entering. Baldwin, Maryland. Nope, not named for the actor. Not named for Alec. But it's one more Mon Pa stop. And up here is the former Mon Pa crossing, where that little hill is right in front of us, north to the right. At this point, this road becomes a state highway. Otherwise known as Baldwin Mill Road. At the bottom of the grade, we cross from Baltimore County into Harford County over Little Gunpowder Falls. 
what you've seen before in my Day Odyssey videos, assuming you watched my Day Odyssey videos. Aha, gotcha. Up ahead we enter Upper Crossroads. I used to ride my bike around here. Up there to the right, the former Wright store, now changed names. I guess now it's the wrong store. Well, got a red block. Back at you. That'll be a day for a Sunday drive. Temperature approaching 80 out there. And I'm using roads I haven't seen in a long time myself. So enjoy. Now coming into Jarrettsville. No railroad here, but they got a subway. Next best thing. There's the gas price these days. I've been shooting gas prices for 30 years, just to keep track. And now on a road named after a baby deer. This is Fawn Grove Road. I'm about to cross Deer Creek. How appropriate. There you go. Double deer. Now we go from deer to here. Historic Eden Mill. The mill was built in 1798. Named after Sir Robert Eden the last royal governor of Maryland. When the mill complex first opened, it was known as Stansbury Mill and manufactured flour. And from 1917 to 1929, the mill housed a power plant the dam for which is over here. That's the rushing water you're hearing right now. And here is Deer Creek Dam. They backed up the water for the mill, for the power plant. For the short time the power plant ran. And of course, these are hiking trails. And here's Deer Creek Lake above the dam. A popular canoeing and rowboating spot. Nestled in the hills. Definitely a portrait of serenity. Got a nice boardwalk path here, boardwalk trail, over the flats. This winds around about another mile. For those who watched my video of a duck out here that I shot a few years back, here is where I shot it. No ducks today though. Alright, back to the mill. There are steps that they wind up the hill to the left. And now back at the mill, which stayed in operation until 1964. And bigger corporations outdid them with more flour production. And in 65, the county bought it and proceeded to make it into a park. 
tables and things down there. And you have an nature center. And this cool boardwalk takes you to it. Around the bend. You can almost hear the dam again. Okay. Alright, head on in. Nature Center. Not much I know. That's about it. It's air conditioned. Animals. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Remember how many how many homes that they used to they used to power from here? Our usual displays. Lots of interpretive displays here. Interpreting the geology and whatever else. The flora and fauna. And my pet bear. Until somebody stuffed him. How foxy. More of my former pets. And more over this way, still alive. Including my northern pine snake. I'll let him rest, don't wake him up. Some turtles of Pennsylvania, but we're still in Maryland. That's a pond slider of the red-eared variety. And some place in here, a couple of my relatives. I used to keep great tree frogs once upon a time, back in the 80s. All in all, a fun place to visit. Kind of reminds me of a hunting lodge. Honey production also takes place here. You last saw that sign in my Halloween 2011 video. Do you recall? Eden Mill Bees. Sounds like a 60s girl group. And up there, the apiary. with bees a-buzzing. So, there you have it. Alrighty, onward. Now on to our next location. A Perry traffic circle. I hate these things. I never know which way to go. I'll try that way. Another Monpa Railroad spot. Sounds good. A 
here we turn right to pick up the original route which you can see up there this way we can pass through the original Pilesville not much left of it though and up in the bend a former Ma and Pa trestle I should say trestle supports, trestle's long gone I have photos of it before the greenery grew up and blocked it anyway here we are one of the supports to the Powellsville trestle now coming into downtown Powellsville there's a store on the right that used to run and apparently it runs again Oh, no, it doesn't. Being fixed up. Ah, uh, fooled me. Now passing through Whiteford, Maryland. There are three towns in a row. Whiteford, Cardiff, and finally crossing the Delta, Pennsylvania. All three went served by the Mount Plow Railroad and Cardiff already. That's what the sign said. These three contiguous towns, I guess that's a word, were all served by the Ma and Pa as mentioned, and covered by the same set of tariffs from the railroad. Now please keep on your side of the line. I've only got one life to live, like a soap opera. And way up there, around the bend, we cross into Pennsylvania, and consequently, and third delta. One of the Mon Pa's predecessor was the York and Peach Bottom Railway, and we'll soon see the station for it. Over 100 years old. And there is the original Peach Bottom Railway Station in the direction of Peach Bottom. Track site was over here at one time, but later on the track was moved to the other side of the station because they were serving a quarry about a quarter mile down, or maybe half a mile down. Yes, there you have it. And here's how it looked with the quarry track still in place. Up here to the left is the site of the former Funkhauser quarry that the Mon Pa once served. Now totally gone. Wow, what a difference. Now we're on the Flintfield Road. At the bottom of the grade, there's one more structure from the Mon Pa's Peach Bottom Branch, which helped build the Peach Bottom Nuclear Power Station. Let's see if they took it out. Nope, still there. And we'll turn here to check out one of the crossings of the former branch. Track removed. But we'll still have a look. I'm glad they paved this road. My last passing, it was dirt. Thank you, York County. and appear at the little hill we crossed the Peach Bottom Branch. It was built in 1883, but closed in 1903, only 20 years later, due to lack of revenue. Didn't last very long, did it? It would have come out of there 
and going through there to Peach Bottom the rest of the way. But it only lasted for 20 years, that was it. In fact, the person who built the Mom Posh predecessor, Stephen G. Boyd, voted against continuing from Delta to Peach Bottom because he said the line would never pay for itself. And the guy was right. But because the Monpa's directors are mostly from Peach Bottom, they overrode him and built the branch anyway. Turns out he got the last laugh. And now we're at Peach Bottom Nuclear Power Station, the end of the former Peach Bottom branch, here on the banks of the Susquehanna. Over there is part of the town of Peach Bottom on the Lancaster County side of the river. There's also Peach Bottom here on the York side. But now it's covered by the water, by the floodwaters from Conowingo Dam. So in effect there are two Peach Bottoms. Lan Lancaster County across the river and York County on this side of the river. But the one here went the way of Atlantis. It's underwater someplace. I'd take it closer in if I could, but I can't. And here's the reason. I want to remain a free man. The power plant began operation in 1967. Within it one in the distance and around the bend, not visible from here. Then a few years later they built the other units and shut down Unit 1. Another nice spot by the river. One can bring their boat and do some boating here. There is a launching ramp down there somewhere. Back on the road again, with one more of those inane circles. These are getting old real quick. Here comes competition. We were on this road earlier that were that goes off that way to the south to the left would be back towards Baltimore and Maryland. In Maryland it's called Highway 165. In PA it's 74. Now we're on 851. Heading for Fawn Grove. But first more Ma and Pa at the bottom of the grade. This time the main line, quote unquote. More Ma and Pa here by Bryansville Crossing. That way's looking north, northwest actually towards York, but now totally grown over. And of course, your frog has photos of when it was still there. But to the southeast, looking back towards Delta, some track is still in place, much to this frog's surprise. And whatever those things are right there, Interesting rocks along here. In fact, the mom powers in for carving out rocks to put their line through. For those who watched my video of our mom pow walk through the little gunpowder Falls Valley, this is exactly what it looked like 
when the track was still in place. And I mean exactly, this is it. If you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend you watch it and then check this out again. Original Montpar rails still in place. Incredible. One more mini cut way down there before the track bends, which the Montpa track did an awful lot of bending. And down there is Scott Creek, which the line paralleled until it came to Muddy Creek, and then followed that to the York area. Now looking northwest again back towards the crossing. And of course I have classic shots of this when the crossing still existed. I believe those things in the rails, they were called dollies. Uh, how about that? Like the lady waiting for me in the car. These apparently were once used for transporting stuff over the rails that didn't have train wheels, obviously. Yeah, I figured it out. There you go. Alright, back on course again. Beyond the crossing to the north, the line is totally grown over and obscured. You can't even tell anything ran there. Now back on course, continuing our, our Sunday into history, and up here is Bryansville proper. Well now check out some spots along the Storchtown Railroad. Interesting farm scene here. Tricky intersection though. Now we're entering Fawn Grove, the former easternmost terminus of the Storchtown Railroad. And up at the stop sign is Fawn Grove Road, the road that took us to Eden Mill. That'd be to the south, to the left. We'll go right and check out the original Georgetown Railroad train station. And there is the former Fawn Grove station of the Georgetown Railroad. That garage there to the right was built later on. The track would have been right where that garage is and coming this way. If the track was still here, I'd be stopped on it. We came out of the left a little while ago. The line from here to New Park was first built as the New Park and Fawn Grail Railroad, and absorbed by the Storage 10 line a bit later on. This part from Storage 10 to here was abandoned in 1935. Here's a look with trains still here. That could be the one time freight station there. But it differs in appearance from the photos I've seen, so I'm not sure. The track would have come as far as here and ended. The track ran right along there. And again, the station across the way there. Now back on A51 West, up heads in place the track would have crossed the road when the track still existed. The track would have come from there before those schools were built. 
They crossed over to the left, up here on the bend. But they're hard to discern. Be able to come across here and go on that way at one time. But taken up in 1935. So obviously obliterated in the intervening years. And up here is New Park, where the line also passed. Now on a side road in New Park, the line would have crossed right up here before these houses were built. And the station would have sat right over here, long torn down. I guess thank progress for that. And now to continue our ride into history. Our next hot spot will be Stewartstown itself. That's just called Stewartstown. It's not called Stewartstown itself. I just said that. And here we are. Stewartstown. The railroad's namesake. We'll go check out the station. I recall when the theater there still ran. Nothing to it now. And right down here, the Storchtown train station. Not the original one though. The original one was a wooden station. And now we're trackside with some equipment here in the yard. A lot of noisy vehicles here in this state. And it's on a national register, which it deserves to be. It'd be nice to get the trains running up here again. And a look inside the station. They like to get the trains running again, but their insurance premiums just just went up, and they can't afford to pay the insurance. That's a story that I've been hearing. So lower those premiums. I recall what registers look like that. That takes me back. And some of the stuff in the yard. But that there doesn't look operable to me. They got some more restoration to do before they can run this again. But the story I get is the insurance premiums went up. They had to stop running for that reason. And looking south towards the station and the former street crossing. And here's the station on the street side. Hi. Again, the former crossing. The track used to cross and then go down right through there. Right through that gap down there. And then about a mile, the curve to the west, to the left, and went towards New Park and Fawn Grove, where we just came from. Up until the early 80s, you could still see rails in the road. more rail vehicles there, but the motor vehicles in this town are awfully loud. Cars, trucks, and motorcycles, I could never live here. And across the way there, cheap cigarettes, 
Why can't they price their gas the lowest allowed by law instead of pricing death at a low price? Let's check out this here car, this coach. They're going to fix this up for sure. The sign says train rides on Sunday, which is what today is. But the website says the line is dormant right now, not operating. There could be a leftover sign from when it did. It stopped operating in 2001, a little bit after 9-11. But not because of 9 11, though. Just insurance premiums. We're in the bend and out of sight is the engine house. We might pass it later. And over here, part of the Historical Society of Stewartstown. And there you have it. More railroad history for you. All right, onward. Up here the line crosses the road. And to the left is the engine house. Got to be a train coming though. So I'll just go on across. Entering Tolona, Pennsylvania now. Up here crossing into Stewartstown. I'll go down here and show you some more. I bet the cuts right across these people's front lawn. How about that? A track on your front lawn. How's that for rail fanning? If only the line still ran. Interesting double crossing right here as well. The first of which is right here. Track parallels the road there for a bit. Then we cross it again. And that way is Stewartstown. And here's the last half of our Stewartstown stations. This was known as Pike Station because it's on the Susquehanna Turnpike. Former Susquehanna Turnpike, whatever. I heard you this on our Dallasie video to Centralia. I passed turn the way to the Grand Canyon to Pennsylvania as well. Former Susquehanna Turnpike. And former US 111 as well. Now unnumbered. That's looking west towards New Freedom, which we'll soon see. And east, back towards Georgetown. If, if you watched my day out of seat to Centralia, you would have seen this. Assuming you watched it. There was an agent at this station until 1969 when it finally closed. And the line ran a commuter train until 72 from Stortstown to New Freedom. At one time, a siding bore off to serve that, that building up there, that warehouse. You can tell right there. The frog is still there. And up there is where it ended. All right, let's go check out New Freedom. And now back on the road. I'm coming into New Freedom. A 
And up ahead we got the Northern Central. Now a bike trail. I now stopped by New Freedom Station of Northern Central. I'm looking south. There are some coaches down there, wooden coaches that were used for passenger runs last year. But someone told me that the locomotive broke, so they can't run the locomotive anymore. Oh, that was quick. And there you see a former white PL by the track, yellow position light, now totally dark. But this way to the north is where the Georgetown line used to come in, over here. And there it is. That's east towards Georgetown, about three miles away from here. At one time there were some Mon Pa hoppers parked on that track over there by that building. They've been removed since I last took a picture of them. Lucky I photographed them while I still could. And south by towards the station area. To the left, these two tracks belong to Storchtown. And to the right, the Northern Central Main Line to Baltimore. Or behind me to York. In fact, I shot a photo here back in the 80s when this looked a lot different. When there is an old coach parked on the right, and to the left where those trees are, was an old wire factory long closed down. Would you like to see it? As they say, wow, what a difference. There is a 44 ton something rather right there. But don't know if they operate it. They had a steam engine running trains last year. Don't know if that diesel there is running its place. I might look into that. Anyway, right behind it is the one time platform where people who are commuting transferred from the Storchtown trains to the central trains. They get off the Storchtown train on the left and board the Northern Central train on the right. Neither of which still operate, unfortunately. And to the right, some nice cabooses. I've got a wintertime shot of those posted on my Google Plus channel if you'd like to have a look. I've also got a video posted where you can see the station being restored in stages. They tore it down to the skeleton. Go to my channel and look it up. Yes, the glory days are gone. Inside the station, something called the Rail Trail Cafe. In fact, back in 2005 and 6, they, they sold a drink that they called the Big Train Blast. I never had one, so I don't know what it comprised of. Maybe like a Long Island iced tea or something. Or New Freedom iced tea, whatever. Yeah, try that. So there you have it, the New Freedom Station area. 
I'm in junction with the Stewartstown there in the distance, as you saw. We've departed New Freedom. We're heading back on a road that we usually come out on. We began a two-day out of seas on this road, coming the other way. If you watched. Now crossing back into Maryland. Passing through Maryland line. And picking up the freeway. And beneath this bridge is the Northern Central Maui Bike Trail. Those of you who watched my Day Odyssey videos know that we use this as a return route off at a time. Here it is with some daylight left. And thanks to time lapse, back in suburbia. And back in town. And almost back in the hood. Hmm. This is ending like my Day Odyssey videos do. Alright, I hope you enjoyed. Maybe I'll do another Sunday history thing or something. If this one goes over well. Catch on the next one.